All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be applying the Type R sticker on Mazda's brand new FD2 Type R. Finally gonna be able to unlock the full potential of this car. It's gonna give about 50 more horsepower and we're just really excited to see the performance difference before and after the sticker. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Are you sure 50 more horsepower? Uh, that's I a think, conservative I, I think estimate. One. one. Just one. It's no. NA. It doesn't uh, give that much boost, you see. I think 100, 100 horsepower. Cause in your in your mind. So this is one. So, so you say oh, one, on. he says 100. My conservative estimate, somewhere in the middle, so about 50. <laughs> Where are we gonna apply it? Are we gonna apply it the rear fender? Yeah. The the bottom. There's a specific place actually, right? Yes, yeah. right. And I'm gonna explain it. Tommy Car Model Limited of the FD2, and it has the optional. Yes, and this is optional. Type our original sticker, shown here. Now. It's funny because the previous two Type R's had it already standard, but for some reason they wanted to keep this very clean. But for you know, guys like him who want to show that he's got a Type R, um, <laughs> we actually got the original, it says here, Honda original access part, and we have it. It's actually quite big. It's much bigger than the one on my car. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's, it's big. Good. It's good. big. Apply it. Now, one really cool thing, you see this curve? It actually follows the body line, so you can't actually go wrong. You can't. Oh wow, okay, so it's idiot. Here we go. All right, dude. all right, all right. Moment so, of truth. Moment, moment of truth. truth. So let's align it first. Yeah. Does it fit? It fits. All oh, right, look at that. Oh, right oh, at the edge. Perfect. So look I just got to get it right to the edge. And let's see. Okay. There's no left and right, right? No, let's it's... make sure. Let's make sure. It doesn't say on the back side, left or right. The hardest so... part is just peeling. Ah, uh, yeah. Go. Okay, okay, I got it. I got it. Hold this, hold this end. Okay. Hold this end. Gotta go down. How many JDM masters do you need to apply a sticker? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Looks like one is enough. You need one more person to film. <laughs> Shite. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't make him laugh. He's gonna apply crooked. <laughs> ah. A little, little bit more left. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah. Correct. Application procedure. You got it. Right the edge. Push it towards the edge. Push it, push it down slowly. There we go. Very nice. There we okay. go. Wait, 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 wait. I need my credit card. <laughs> I thought you threw your back. Like, wait, wait, wait. Here the we go. What's happening? You're okay. using the credit Pull more. card. Pull more. Yeah. Yeah. More, more, yeah. more. Okay, very nice. Here we go. I don't care about the other part. I just care about the center part. Keep doing it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stop. So now we get to the other edge. Okay. Yep. This is a very delicate operation over here. Come on. Trying not to use my credit card because someone will skip my credit card. <laughs> oh, good, thank you. No problem. Just about the very end. There we go. I'll squeeze those bubbles out. The last thing you want is an air bubble. But I think you did all right. Great. Look at that. Great job. What we've done is we've yeah? turned your normal FD2. Yeah. To a type by just by applying the stickers. Ah, uh, yeah. We've done one side, so this this gives about 25 horsepower. Here we're gonna apply the other side, which will enable the full 50 horsepower increase horsepower. over stock. Yeah. Very carefully applying the second sticker on the other side. Looks like it's all done. We have the stickers on both sides. Applied perfectly, professionally. Actually, it's really easy because it can follow the exact line of the door. And you know, it really gives it like that last little touch. Sometimes stickers will really make the car and Type R sticker specifically, you know, this is a sticker, this is an emblem, but it really, really gives Honda cars that extra bit of <sighs> excitement. Although the thing is, you know, with Hondas, with Type R's, you can only have a Type R sticker on a real Type R, in my opinion, uh, and even the red badge. So you can see over here, the red badge is very specific for Type R models. And you know, previously I was thinking about getting a red badge for the S2000. The captain convinced me out of it actually. He's like, he explained very clearly, it's reserved for the Type Rs, so it's kind of cheesy if you put it on a non-Type R car. You know, that being said, you know, you do what you want with your own car. Just this is just my thinking. This is just our thinking that we want to keep uh, the, the correct badging, the correct colors for the, the correct cars. Um, anyways, the top bar looks amazing now. It looks great. I love the seats. I love how it looks. Oops, sorry, I'm in your shot. They're shooting their own video. 
just a great, great, beautiful car. I really like these these white wheels, but in my opinion, the best wheels for this car are bronze C28s. Maybe like those. Yeah, I mean, my exact wheels. I think it's actually a different uh, a different size. So this is PCD 100. This is probably PCD 114. But yeah, for now, it, it does look really, really good. White on white looks amazing, especially with the red Brembo brakes. Yeah, it's fantastic. Marcus, uh, just finishing up his uh, introduction of his car on the GDM Master channel. So that's really, really cool. And actually, on the speakers, they just asked us to leave because they say we can't film here. But oh well, uh, we're just gonna get out of here once they finish this. We're literally gonna kick that right now. I think the police is driving by. Okay, dude, it's good to see you, man. Take care. Bye, take care. We'll see you in Osaka. See you, man. See ya. Yeah, I know. Ichata. Alright, let's take off. Let's take off. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Yeah, luckily. All done. All done. All done. Hold done. Okay. All done. Hold done. Hold done. Nice. Okay. Can you hook me film? Just hold this. I'll never catch us. If you can go down in 60 seconds. If you can go faster than 18 kilometers an hour, I can't catch you. Hey guys, all right, so we are starving. It's been a long day and we are finally able to grab some dinner after a lot of shooting. And the shooting always makes you super hungry. And today we wanted to eat at a karage place. Karage is Japanese fried chicken. And um, we're at a place called Karayoshi. And uh, this is actually a chain, super delicious. And we're gonna try out these spicy, spicy kind of soy sauce based uh, uh, sauce. Um, and it kind of tastes like, you know, the Korean spicy fried chicken. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Juicy. What do you like about deep fried chicken? The best thing about Japanese fried chicken is how crunchy on the outside was really juicy on the inside. Somehow they managed to get that correct combination, which can be quite difficult, and not every karage place gets it right. But this is definitely my favorite chain, and I love this place. This is definitely my favorite chain, and it's great we were able to find this place on the way back home. Whew, this is great. Mm -hmm. Really well, karage. <laughs> and this is also a karage which I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat. Oops. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Mm. It's so juicy. That's really, really juicy. It's the perfect taste for a warm, humid summer evening. Here we also have kimchi, unlimited kimchi as a side, which you can just take as much as you want. I love kimchi, so I'm gonna get a whole bunch. 
Let's give that kimchi a taste. Mm, surprisingly spicy. Usually in Japan, the kimchi isn't that spicy because it's usually adapted for Japanese tastes, which tend to be a little bit more mild. This is surprisingly, surprisingly spicy. Not quite as spicy as Korean kimchi, but maybe halfway there. Tastes quite good with the, with the chicken. It's a good combination. Going back to white chop. Yeah. Okay, now describe how each of these different tastes and textures blends well together. One sec, that piece stuck between my teeth. <laughs> mm. Okay, we roll. Okay. We have all these different flavors that are mixing quite well together. You have this diced cabbage with a Japanese mayonnaise. Which has a nice light taste. Then you have the really strong, sweet, and slightly spicy taste of the karage, which also blends well with the really spicy tang of the kimchi. And when you need to take a break from all these different strong flavors, all you gotta do is have a bit of miso soup. Mm. To reset your palate just a little bit. All right, so it's my turn to sample this rather interesting looking Kentucky Fried Chicken copy, uh, Japanese take on it. Um, so I've got the savory type ones, I've got the sweet ones, and kimchi. The good thing about this shop is that it's free, so I'm just going to load it up like a, like a beggar on the street. And unlike you, you've, taken the, you've used the mayonnaise, I'm not that sophisticated, I'm just going to go for sesame, which I think goes very well with the salad. And of course you have your nice bowl of rice. And one thing about Japanese rice, now it's much softer and it gives this um, opposite kind of taste. But let's go ahead and try. That's just huge. Hmm. Mm. Not bad for Japanese take on what's essentially Kentucky Fried Chicken. But at the same time, there are a lot of differences. Well, first of all, it's an entire nugget, it's an entire cut, and it's deep fried in batter. Kind of like fish and chips, um, with a much more crispy consistency on the on on the outside, but the inside is just juicy. That it's not, it's not quite the same. So it's a bit different, and I think if you're in the mood for just lots of chicken, and you're too lazy to go down to to the Kentucky Fried Chicken, and and you don't to deal with all the bones and everything, um, and you want some traditional Japanese rice. Now, this is really not bad, you know. Working class food. No, it fills the stomach. Does the job. All right, so we are about halfway through our meal now. And you know, at the beginning, I was quite excited to have this karage because it's been a while, to be honest. But the more you eat, it fills you up really, really quickly. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. This is definitely one of Japan's, this is really the equivalent of America's Kentucky Fried Chicken or the UK's fish and chips, you know. This is kind of comfort food. It's uh, not that healthy for you, but it, it really does hit the spot when you need something that's really gonna satiate you, but maybe not something you wanna eat every single day. When I first came to Japan, I definitely made a mistake of going to places like this way too often, and my waistline ballooned as a result. So, while these meals are very cheap, very delicious, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So now we just finished uh, dinner, and uh, it's been a long day. I'm gonna stop by 7-Eleven to get something to eat or something. All right. Oh, that was a good dinner. That was a good dinner. I'm thinking getting something sweet, like some ice cream or something. Yeah, get some energy. Yeah, for the ride back home. So maybe some ice cream? Some ice cream? Uh, maybe an energy drink? You know, know, you maybe another having... monster energy or something? 
you're always having ice cream or some energy drink. What about having some traditional or like very classic Japanese sweets? Hmm. Hmm. That's a for, good idea. For actually. a change. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah. I'm sure you'll like it. Yeah. Maybe it'll be good content if anything. So let's have a look. What do, they, what, what do we have here? All right. So let's look for the sweet section. Um, around here, here we have the Japanese style snacks. Sam jerky. Whoa. I mean, I've had beef jerky, but salmon jerky, that's... Uh, do you think this tastes like dried sushi? I don't know how appetizing that would be, but maybe a pass on that. Whoa, okay, what about this? So this is a vinegar dried squid. This looks more like something I would watch at a very late night than something I would want to eat. Nah, nah, this is a pass, this is a pass. I think you should have something sweet and cold. We have some pudding over here in Japan. Uh, this is quite good, and for some reason pudding is a lot more popular in Japan than it is back in Canada, so I didn't really eat a lot of pudding until I came to Japan. Here's what I suggest you should try. Here. Oh, I've never had one of these actually. So this is so this is called dorayaki. 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 Like, Have you ever watched Doraemon? That's exactly what I was about to say. Doraemon, the, the little blue robot cat. You've never tried it before, I suppose. No, I've never tried this. Uh, so what is this? It says pancake red bean paste with whipped cream. I don't know how I feel about red bean and a pancake. I feel like pancakes, maple syrup, pancakes, and pancake syrup. That's that's a proper combination. But red bean, I don't know. But you know, I'm, I'm willing to try anything at least once, maybe twice three times if I was drunk the first two times. So, what do you think? No, mate, you're wrong. You, you, you're missing on a really nice Japanese treat. So you've got, you know, a very familiar pancake, and then it complements very well with fresh whipped cream is from Hokkaido. The Japanese whipped cream is milky in taste. And red beans, I know, that's something that foreigners maybe, you know, are not used to. Mm -hmm. But somehow the combination of this, and then it's cold, it's, it's just very refreshing, so you got to try it. You know what? I, I I do think, now that you've explained it that way, it does seem like kind of a, an amalgamation of Western and Eastern tastes, and I love those combinations, so I think this might be worth a shot. Let's give it a try, and if I don't like it, you can have the other half. Fair enough. Sounds good? All right, let's go for it. Get it done. Okay, so we have our coffee and our pancake with whipped cream and red bean. I think it'll be a good combination. A bite. Oh, that's good. Rainbow coffee is um, it's a bit sweet. It's not too strong. It's, it's a very it strong milk taste. Very strong milk taste. In fact, yeah. it has everything in a very nice balance, like all, color, all the colors of the rainbow. Therefore, probably the rainbow blend. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It sounds, sounds plausible. Okay, yeah, all right. You're gonna be, you're gonna be Doraemon Rao. Let's try this. Let's give it a shot, shall Are you we? Ready? All right. Okay. Feeling generous today. Here you go. So here's what it looks like. It's like a sandwich. It's a pancake sandwich with red bean. Go on. Terakimasu. Yep. Terakimasu. Hmm. Mmm. Very fluffy. It's very very fluffy. Yeah. It is very Japanese. Because of the red beans, too. Because of the red bean. The red bean has a very Japanese taste. Like, red bean is one of those flavors that is quite, quite Japanese. But the surrounding is obviously a pancake, and that, that Western taste kind of dances with the Eastern taste of the red bean. So the combination is, actually goes quite well together. Once, once you get over the fact that you're eating a pancake, really a pancake with, with red bean. But it's a Costello, so it has a slightly different texture as well. It's Costello's more fluffy. So, mm. here's some interesting facts about the dorayaki. So according to some information on the internet, the original dorayaki actually consisted of only one layer, not two, as in, as in this one. And the current shape was invented in 19... Guess what year? 20... Oh, hang on. Hmm. 
1947. Just after the war? Actually, it's yeah. 1914. 14. 14. Oh. By Usagiya, which is a shop in the Ueno district of Japan. Now, in Japanese, Dora means gong. A gong. Ah, oh, like so that's why dorayaki is like it's a round shape. Yes, yes, exactly. And yaki just means like grilled, a something grill. grilled, right? Yes, yes, yes. So like like a, like grill. a grilled gong. So there's a, the, the, the story goes further. Um, so it means gong because of the similarity of the shapes, which is probably the origin of the name of the sweet. Legend has it that the first dorayaki was made when a samurai named Benke forgot his gong upon leaving his father's home, where he was hiding. And the farmer subsequently used the gong to fry pancakes. <laughs> Thus the name Dorayaki. It's very industrious. Yeah. Quite entrepreneurial. Very entrepreneurial. Yeah. So, I wish I had more. That was actually really good. Yeah, surprisingly uh, you, delicious. You should have eaten the whole thing. <clears throat> Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Went around all around Yokohama. And uh, in this series, Masa got his new car. The FT2 Civic Type R. And it's an awesome car. I'm super happy for him. And hopefully we'll be seeing him in future videos when we go to Osaka. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video series and saw us driving around and eating a bunch of stuff and uh, eating that dorayaki at the end. That was super delicious. So hopefully in other episodes, we'll be doing more food challenges. So let me know what you guys thought about this video series in the comments below. And we'll catch you in the next video. All right? Thanks. Peace.